All right, everybody, welcome back to the WKNS. This is episode number seven, and this is probably going to be the final major build episode of this series. Uh, we're back here at Kempton on the south end of the railroad, and uh, this is where the line is going to end. I understand that the track does continue south for another mile and a half or something through the woods from here, and I'm not going to be modeling that area because it's sort of, from what I understand, it's an out-of-service section of track. If you guys want to add on to it yourselves, I do extend the track into the woods, so it is possible to continue that on once the route is released, if that is something that interests you. Uh, but we are back here at Kempton, and I'm, I'm not too sure why I didn't do this first, since I built in a linear fashion, but uh, I wanted to spend a little bit of extra time in this area, making sure that it was perfect and it was right. Uh, so I spent a lot of time on Google Earth, looking at aerial satellite imagery of the area, and there is some limited street view uh, views of uh, the main street here and stuff like that. So I spent a lot of time looking at that, looking at photographs, and trying to digest all the elements that comprise this little town here. And the thing that made it really particularly challenging is that this part of the town is built on a hill, on like a hillside, and there's a lot of retaining walls and that sort of thing, which you'll see me begin to develop in a few moments here. Um, but that, that posed a real challenge because I don't know if you've ever built anything on a hill in this game, but it's not that simple. <laughs> so that was the big challenge here. Um, and also a personal challenge for me is actually trying to identify what these structures are and what the uses of them are so that I could accurately kit bash something together and make it look like the real deal. So again, all I have to work off of is some Google satellite imagery and uh, limited street view and of course whatever limited assets we have in the game. So I did spend a lot of time going through grain facility and um, the farming assets and stuff like that and just trying to figure out which ones look the most like what I've been seeing uh, in the uh, Google Earth imagery. Overall, I think it's a pretty decent representation of what the area actually looks like, uh, given the available assets to me. Uh, so again, this this area of, of the, the railroad is sort of semi out of service. I think they use this old team track as uh, when they get a new equipment and they, they use it to load things in and out, is my understanding. And I think that this was built off of an old siding, so there's remnants of the original main line. I'm not sure if I fully understand exactly how this was constructed and came to be, but from what I've gathered, the current main track that continues through Kempton and then south was part of a siding, and then the main track is right where I just put those ties there. I'm not too sure, but that's sort of what it looks like in the videos that I've seen and then the photographs that I've seen. So just try and replicate that as best as possible. And I do end up replacing those ties, the, the big chunk of ties with more individual ones, uh, which I did off camera and you'll see it in the ending cinematics. But I thought that it looked a lot better. The ties just blended a little bit more nicely than using one big asset full of ties. So I think that that looks pretty good. Um, for the most part though, as I'm getting close to the end of this series, the progress is slowing down tr tremendously uh, because there's more and more background scenes left to fill in. So I might, I'm probably going to end up doing a lot of that during a live stream or two coming up uh, instead of making videos. I might do one more video where I do a full detail pass over uh, of everything and, and go through some of these scenes and, and detail them. I might not do that. I might just do it all during a, uh, during a live stream. I'm, I, I haven't decided, but I think a live stream might be a good way to go. So one of the things that I wanted to capture also in this town is this main road here uh, is sort of a little bit wider because there's on-street parking. Uh, because this town is built on a hillside, the houses that are here don't really look like they have driveways, so I'm, I'm imagining that they park on the road. So I wanted to make sure that I, I got that look. Um, and there's also a lot of parked cars on this little embankment here. So I wanted to make sure that I got that in there, and I spent way more time than I should have uh, trying to lay out this road and get it to look just right. Uh, and I settled on using these asphalt spline textures, which when you put them side by side, if they're on the same height, they blend seamlessly. So that's actually two splines next to each other. And uh, they're actually overlapping, but they're made in such a way that you can't even see the seam. So I really like these. Uh, I've used them on the Rochester Division for some road sections and bridge sections. They work out really nicely. Definitely recommend checking them out. So what I did there was just double wide them and then I'm adding a sidewalk on the one side. And this has just, you know, it's a small town. It's got the small town vibe to it with some mixed commercial and residential in infrastructure like around town. So 
I did my best to uh, to replicate that with uh, the auto garage there and a couple of houses that are sprinkled in on the hill. And of course, one of the main things that you end up with as a, as a result of placing buildings on, on a hillside in this game is that you have floating things. You have either the back half of the building might be buried or the front half of the building is floating or vice versa. You're going to end up with something that looks kind of funny. So the way to solve that is to use uh, some embankment uh, retaining wall splines, which is what I did uh, starting looks like right here and um, It was a real pain, but it, the effect is good And from what I saw also from Street View is that much of the town is built like this that there are these uh, embankment fill uh, Retaining walls I keep saying embankment, but retaining walls uh, that are up against the the sidewalk and cutouts are there for the to access the houses and, and stuff like that so um, again, this is sort of more of a background scene since this section of track isn't necessarily fully in service. Um, but I did want to spend some time here to make sure that it looked good and I did the did the area justice as best as possible. Um, but working with these splines to, to make the retaining wall work um, was really tricky and it was mostly because, as we all know, you go to grab a spline point and you never, if there's two of them next to each other, you're never going to grab the one that you want. So I ended up with spending a ton of time just trying to fine-tune it and make it look good. Uh, I did most of that off-camera. This is the first one that I did on-camera. The rest of it I did off-camera. Uh, but the effect is awesome. It looks really good. It was well worth the time. And blending it together with the rest of the scenery has been no problem so far. And speaking of that, um, when it comes down to the scenery itself, uh, I do have a lot more scenery to fill in in this area. I just ran out of time with this episode, so I didn't fill everything in. Um, at this point, I'm trying to bring in the road markings onto this uh, otherwise markedless road, and I absolutely do not recommend doing this this way at all because it is a tremendous pain. I do it again towards the end of the episode, you'll see. Uh, but getting the spline points that are stacked on top of each other to line up properly and not float or not be underneath and clipping is a major, major headache, especially when you're working on a grade. Um, you can't always just plug in the exact spline point to match because there's different little imperfections in how the bend is and this and that. It's really, it's really a pain in the butt. Um, but it looks good. I mean, for here, it looks really good, but I, I don't recommend doing it this way. If you're going to do handmade roads like, like I like to do with these road markings, your best bet is to just place a texture down and do it on a flat surface and then put the road markings down. Try not to do it this way if you can avoid it. Obviously, I had to, I had to do it this way. I needed to use the asphalt spline because we're built up on a retaining wall. And uh, I couldn't just have the texture laid down because it wouldn't be flat. It would be kind of crooked. So as you can see there in that last little uh, underlay thing, that was the edge of the, the DEM UTM tile. So basically anything beyond this scene is sort of just my best guess in terms of exactly what it's going to look like. And I think I did fudge the roads here a little bit. I'm not too sure where I went wrong, but I think it's close enough that, you know, who, who cares? <laughs> So some of these UTM tiles, they end very nearby the tracks, and then I just have been looking at Google Earth and sort of just using artistic license to fill in the background, and, and I think it'll be fine. It's, it's going to work just fine. Um, but a lot of these other background scenes still need to be done. I don't want it to just transition directly into forest or anything like that. I think it's really important to have farmlands uh, where they should be in the background, because this is rural Pennsylvania, and there's a lot of farmlands, a lot of, a lot of farms, and... Um, a lot of the those tree dividing areas and, and that sort of thing so I mean anytime that you're driving a train and if you play the way that I do where you kind of fly above the train instead of going into cab view uh, you see a lot more of that scenery so I want to make sure all the scenes are nice and deep and uh, you get that that full experience of, of being out there uh, despite that not necessarily being what you would see in real life but uh, I think for me it makes the immersion of the game a little bit uh, better so I want to make sure that I include that. Um, here, continuing a little bit more south past the out-of-service track, I believe this track is totally out of service. Uh, I did see a, a maintenance vehicle run on it very recently. I think they took a maintenance train on there this year, if I'm not mistaken. Somebody sent me a video on Facebook, and I was watching it, and I was pretty surprised that they actually were using that track at all. Um, but this is about as far as I model with it, and there seems to be this retaining wall again, um, blocking where these houses are away from the tracks and keeping everything in place. So definitely something that was necessary to include in there. And of course, more farmland <laughs> anywhere. There was an opening. There seems to be farmland. So 
Uh, this has been a really fun project, I, I gotta say, but I'm getting a little tired of planting trees, I'm not gonna lie, so looking forward to bouncing back to something else that's a little bit more, uh, more urban or suburban, I guess, instead of rural. Uh, but this has been a, a really great build so far, and I can't wait to, to totally wrap it up and, and finish the background scenes, because there's a lot of... You'll see... Actually, I don't know if you'll see it in the cinematics, but uh, there there is a lot of empty tiles in the background. Like, I feel like I've done so much work on this, and then, you know, there's still grid everywhere. Um, and now back to what I was saying with the, uh, with the spline roads. Like, that looked good from the air, but all of those road markings are floating, and you really have to get down with a fine-tooth comb and try to, you know, make sure that it's level and add all these spline points in there and move things around, and it's a, it's a real pain to do, so uh, don't recommend doing that at all. Um, and I'm not gonna... I have to change out these roads for something else because they are JR roads, and I need to find them, find something else to replace them from the download station, but I'm definitely not doing hand <laughs> roads for the rest of this. It's just, it's just uncalled for. It would be too much work and too ridiculous, but I might use the asphalt road themselves without the marking in some places. I haven't decided. That's, it's going to be its own project is, you know, changing things out. Uh, and now we're going to jump into some cinematics here and take a look at a little flyover of the area. And uh, I think it came out pretty good. It looks pretty nice to me. Obviously, we're going to come back through here probably in one more episode or a live stream and do some more detailing, get some more cars parked on the side of the roads, bring in some more debris, grass and shrubs, and whatever else. I mean, we it's a small map, so we can really just go crazy with the details. Uh, I just need to figure out what kind of stuff to include in here. And I'm sure you guys will give me an idea down in the comments or on Discord or wherever else. And uh, But I'm pretty happy about how this is looking. It looks nice. Here's that siding with the new ties. Well, not new ties, but replaced ties, which looks a lot better. And then in this next clip, we're going to get to see the first look of Steve's steam engine for this. Uh, so super exciting. He's still working on the coaches and I believe the caboose, but the steam engine is almost done. He said I could show it off here. So there's our first look at it, and that will uh, be available over at k &L Trains once this is all released. We're gonna time it out just like we did with the other releases, so both the route will be available at the same time as the content for it at k &L. So stay tuned for that. Uh, that's gonna do it for this episode, guys. I hope you've been enjoying the series. It seems like everybody has. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you next time.